This is a little female radiated tortoise. There's all kinds of cool things that happen with these ecosystems. Right now, I'm just giving her a little scratchy. This guy is awesome. Watch out behind you, quickly. It's a tortoise attack. That is Socrates. You got these big ghoulers, and you are not to be trifled with, buddy. Look at those horns, they're blue. Oh yeah, hi beautiful. All right, I'm sorry dude. You have to be social here at the camp. What's better than one? Eight. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Look at that. Hey, what's going on everyone? Good morning. Welcome once again to the camp. Uh, it's been a while since we've done an actual tour. So I figured let's do a big blowout tour for the end of this season. Uh, there's a lot of new things going on and we're about to get right to it. Okay, now eventually we're gonna have tortoises on our tortoise tour. It seems like everyone's still asleep, but here's Hercules, he's up early. You guys know Hercules as the giant tortoise that was doing combat with Lumpy just last week. Don't worry, I moved Lumpy out because you know what? It was getting a little bit hairy and I didn't wanna have to keep flipping tortoises back over and worry about them hurting each other. But Hercules is a great tortoise. He came to me about 10 years ago. I got him from a nice elderly gentleman in Boca Raton, Florida, who had him for a long time and said, hey, I got this tortoise, make me an offer. So I said, ah, I'll give you 50 bucks. He goes, sold. And I took him and he's been living here ever since and I love him dearly. And he's in here, he's the only male in with seven females and they get full range of this place. So they're kind of wandering around right now, but you guys can see, oh, here's one poking out right now. Hi, good morning, young lady, welcome. And uh, you know, have a great day and uh, enjoy your time living at the camp. That's what they do. These guys are awesome, man. I love tortoises because I'm so full of energy and ADD and all over the place. And these animals are chill, which is nice. Now let's move along to our next enclosure. When I bought this place way back in 2004, uh, I had the dream of creating a reptile paradise for my animals, and I hope that's what I am constructing. I mean, now I'm I, what, 18 or 19 years into this whole adventure, and throughout the channel and building everything, I have really had some amazing experiences with meeting other YouTubers and other people with a like-minded interest. And I have to give a big shout out to one of the channel's biggest supporters. Of course, I'm talking about Aquascape, they came in a few years back, I think it was 2018. Watch your step, look out, there's tortoises everywhere. Oh, by the way, yeah, we're in with the radiated tortoises. Hi, little buddy. This is a little female radiated tortoise. Oh, they're so beautiful. And uh, I love them so much, man. They're just amazing little animals uh, that are an endangered species, but we got them nice and safe here. And of course, we've got cameras everywhere. We've got security everywhere. And uh, you know, we'll be talking about it later. But of course, you know that I did have a break-in uh, earlier this year in 2022. Uh, but good news is the thieves were caught, the animals were returned, and uh, hopefully that'll dissuade any other evildoers from breaking in here. But I was talking about Aquascape. They came in here in 2018 and built me the first Aquascape ecosystem pond. I absolutely love this thing. If you're a turtle lover, having a pond is like having the ultimate aquarium or the ultimate turtle habitat. Look at how much it's thrown in. There's all kinds of cool things that happen with these ecosystems. Look at this. This log they placed in here, it's rotted nicely. We've got moss and grasses growing. We've got crocodile skulls. And then of course I planted some papyrus in here and you can see it's grown in. It's actually a natural filtration. In fact, I'm gonna have to cut some of that back so I can continue getting a good amount of flow here on this waterfall. But it's amazing. But the most exciting thing about this pond is its inhabitants. Oh no, look, you've got cobwebs on you. Let me help you out there, there, Matt. All right, we're back to business. We got, I got cobwebs on me, but I kind of like it because it makes me feel like Indiana Jones walking through a temple of doom. Anyway, here they are, some of the inhabitants. And what I can do, friends, is I can grab some of my Fluker Buffet blend, and I'm gonna throw some out. Again, another great relationship that I've been able to build throughout the years is the relationship with Fluker Farms. Uh, these guys have been great and they make amazing foods for my animals. 
And uh, this is the buffet blend, and it's got shrimp, mealworms, and the pellets. So right now, you guys are looking at the Badiger, Borneensis, and the Indian Spotted Turtle, or Geoclemys Hamiltoni. Both are endangered animals, and both being raised up here. Now, I'm gonna go submersible. Let's see what we got here, peoples. Uh, yeah, we're gonna go underwater, whoop, and we're gonna have a peek at these guys. And you can see amazing swimming abilities on the Badiger. These guys are great, highly aquatic. Uh, we have some larger Badiger in the back pond we'll see in a little bit. We've also got some African cichlids in here that have just been reproducing like crazy. Got these from Angel's Hatchery down in Homestead, Florida. We've got also other species of turtles that we'll see here momentarily. Uh, we've got pink belly side necks. We've got Central American sliders. Um, and these guys get to use this entire habitat. And then of course Aquascape came back and built us the next pond you're gonna see on this tour. Oh, by the way, look all across here. Look at this. Here's another spotted turtle. Indian spotted way across there. Let me help you guys out. Check it out, man. There's turtles absolutely everywhere doing their thing here at the camp, which is amazing, guys. I absolutely love it. There's always someone to find, and there's always something to see. So let's wander through here, and I'll show you some more of their habitat. Again, beautiful, beautiful streams that these guys have built for me. Turtles hide everywhere. The grasses have all grown up nicely. It's really maturing here. And uh, the best part about it is these little lunatics waiting for their food. So let's give them a little, a little sneaky. And every once in a while, you'll see a turtle gets a little nip on his neck. Sometimes there's a little bit of combat between water turtles. But these three Central American sliders, we got a fourth one right here. They seem to be the most dominant animals in here. And then a small Indian spotted turtle. But we do have young Orlidia borneensis. We've got Asian box turtles in here. We've also got, uh, what else did I say? There's one other turtle, Asian box turtle, Orlidia. Oh gosh, I forget. There's so many turtles in here. It's awesome, man. Everybody is just doing fantastic in this pond. Uh, I love this pond also. Actually, you're gonna hear me say that I love ponds, and that's because I do. Like I said, being a young lad, keeping turtles my whole life, I was always trying to have these kind of habitats. Here, let me show you. I found one of the Orlidia. There it is. Oh, don't be scared, Mr. Orlidia. There's an Orlidia borneensis. And then over here is our pink belly side neck turtle. There's a bunch of those living in here. So it's fantastic how many different species I've got hanging out in this pond. Look at that. Oh, there's the Orlidia. Hey, little dude. Very, very cool. And of course, we've got these maniacs, <laughs> the Central American sliders. These guys will come out of the water and chase me down for food. So cool. All right, what do you say? We got to keep this tour moving. There is so much to see and so little time to get it done in. Oh, can't forget Cersei. Check her out. She's still sleeping with some of these beautiful uh, radiateds. There she is. She's just waking up. Hi, Cersei. There she is. She's my little girl. Oh, she likes a good scratch. Tortoises can feel through their shells. Their shells are a living part of their bodies. And right now I'm just giving her a little scratchy. Oh, yeah. Oh, get off me, she says. What are you doing? Oh, my gosh. Here, for your troubles, have some breakfast. All right. How cool is that? She'll, she'll wind up eating that. Don't worry, guys. Okay, we're moving. Oh, and again, I was wanting to show you guys some of the things I've done this year. We uh, raised the fence. We planted some plants. We did the uh, mulching. I think it looks so much better. Don't you guys? Let me know in the comments below how you think the camp is evolving. We went from a smallish Aldabra tortoise to the giant tortoises that I keep here at the camp. Here is Nostradamus. Probably my favorite tortoise here, but don't tell Socrates and Darwin, okay? I do love this tortoise. Uh, anyway, 
Let's go talk to him first. I love him so much. Got him in 2004 when I moved here. He is just a gorgeous animal and he loves to be scratched. And I think this is why I've always bonded with him is he's so gentle. When he was little, he was shy, but he kind of has come out of his shell. <laughs> you like that? That's funny stuff, right? Yeah, dad jokes. What are you gonna do? Anyway, this guy is awesome and they love to stretch out and get a scratch and I think uh, number one, it feels good. And number two, in their natural habitat, birds will fly down and pick little ecto parasites off of their skin. So it feels good. They get clean. Watch out behind you. Quickly. It's a tortoise attack. It's Darwin. Darwin, the big Galapagos tortoise. She's a female. You like her, Matt? Yeah. Yeah, Matt's pretty psyched on these giant tortoises, man. Uh, it's so much fun to have Matt around because it's like a fresh pair of eyeballs and I get reinvigorated by seeing how stoked he is at all these animals. And that's what I'm hoping. There's some fresh pair of eyeballs on this video as well. We want to welcome you guys to this big family we have. Become a camper. You can also go to patreon.com slash camp Kennen if you want to see more content and help support what we do here on YouTube, educating everyone about these amazing animals. That is Socrates. Got Socrates in 2005 from my friend Jerry Mata, and uh, he's got a bunch of Galapagos tortoises up north. And uh, man, oh, don't worry, he's not mean. He's just not as gregarious as Nostradamus is. But these guys are fantastic. And in the summertime, I open up this whole area of the camp where they can explore this amazing jungle thicket. Check it out over here, guys. Amazing thicket, it's a jungle. And these guys can wander through there. They eat the different weeds that grow up and it gives them exercise because Galapagos tortoises need exercise so that they can lift those shells up off the ground and walk with proper posture, believe it or not. You don't want these tortoises to get scoliosis or curvature of the spine or hip dysplasia. So we have to give them a very good, awesome jungle gym as it is. Uh, we also built this. One of the very first episodes we did here on YouTube was my friend Mark Colette helped me build this water hole so that the tortoises could climb up and over and stretch out and really work those legs. So right now, Nostradamus is the only one taking a bath, but that's all right. Super happy. Look at how stretched out he is. They remind me of like a sauropod dinosaur. You know, when I look at these guys with their long necks and those big bodies, that's what it reminds me of. And they're herbivores as those dinosaurs were thought to be. So it's really cool that we have these animals that have been on earth for over 250 million years in this shape in this type of body uh, for at least that long. Uh, the only thing that they have that modern turtles don't are teeth. Isn't that amazing? Turtles used to have teeth. Now they have beaks like a bird. Uh, word of the day, Rampathica. Rampathica is the scientific name for beak. So there you go. Uh, you're learning something. Uh, I hope you enjoy that. I don't know. I'm a nerd. I read a lot. What are you going to do? Uh, let's wander. We're continuing. Let's go see Lumpy since uh, you guys want to make sure he's okay. Ah, look at him. He's way across the way here in his little bachelor pad and he's getting the early morning sun, which is nice. Uh, like I said, I pulled him out because it was a little bit crazy, the combat. Let me just go up and over. And then like, I like to do this with the kids. It's like you're walking on a lava. Like if they fall off, they go into lava. You know what I mean? So I like to walk on this thing practice my balance. Uh, this is also a great way for a 48 year old to get hurt. So let's get down and go see Lumpy right now. How about it, Lumps? I gotta get you a girlfriend. Should I just bring a couple chicks over here? I don't know, man. Are you super lonely? You got these big ghoulers and you are not to be trifled with, buddy. Oh, I love this tortoise. He came to me, uh, gosh, he's been here as long as I've been here. Got him in 2004 from a family friend and uh, he's very special to me. We almost lost him a few years ago, but he is doing fantastic. Um, I am gonna have to set up this heated shelter right over here. We've got the tortoise bunker. We're gonna clean it out. We're gonna put a heating pad in there and he's gonna be all set. Uh, so yeah, the only thing about this guys is <laughs> I really didn't, uh, you see all the mosquitoes? I don't know if you can see that. Um, bad design on my part for this thing. So it's very difficult for me to get in and clean it, but I'm gonna, and Lumpy is gonna have a very nice house. Okay, let's move on. Okay, not far from Lumpy lives 
the elongated tortoises. These guys are from Southeast Asia. Let's go down. And if you just peel apart the detritus on the forest floor here, hold on, airplane. Okay, anyway, if you peel apart the forest floor, you can see tortoises doing something they love to do. They're searching out micro habitats or microclimates. So outside the ambient humidity is a lot uh, high, lower, lower, and they like higher humidity. So what they do, they dig down and they get into this moist soil and it's warmer too. As it decays, it creates heat. They like to kind of hang out in it, hide themselves. Uh, this is a species that lives in Southeast Asia, into Indonesia, Sulawesi, all these different places. And they are a beautiful little kind of unassuming turtle, tortoise rather. And uh, I love them. I think they're cool. I want to show you one. There's got to be one wandering around at this point. I know there's some in the water over there, but let's go cover this tortoise up and I'm going to find you one that's probably, ah, here's one right here. You can see his head. Check him out. I'll bet this is a female. So this one is not buried in. Oh, it's actually a male. I was incorrect. So the males are going to have the concavity of the plastron and that long tail. And the males get this beautiful pink head uh, during breeding season. So right now, uh, these guys are just chilling out, but you can see they also call them a yellow-headed tortoise, um, and they're fantastic. So this group came to me from someone who saved them from a food market many, many years ago. And uh, wow, they were gonna eat these little dudes, but luckily we got them all, nursed them back to health, and now they are forever home, is here at the camp. Uh, love them, really cool animals. All right, let's move over here to the cherry head tortoises, which we have been seeing a lot of lately because it is cherry head tortoise egg laying season, okay? And this is one of the small males. This one here belonged to my buddy, Greg Fleming, who was an amazing vet who worked for Disney's Animal Kingdom. And sadly, he passed away while on a trip to help white rhinos in, uh, I believe it was Mozambique. And uh, unfortunately, he had an aneurysm and passed away unexpectedly. And it was very sad because uh, he was just an amazing guy loved turtles and tortoises and all animals and uh, was fortunate enough that I was able to get uh, one of his children to continue his legacy here at the camp and always be reminded of him. So shout out to uh, this tortoise and Greg's memory. Just an amazing person. So remember that name, Greg Fleming, great guy, character, and uh, really helped me out in the early days here at the camp with some help with my animals when I had some kind of injury or sickness, was always available uh, to take the call. And he had such an amazing job working with all the big hoof stock and giant animals at Disney's Animal Kingdom. So very cool. And we've been finding babies in here. We've also been getting eggs being laid. You can see right here, this looks like a, a nest that, that was excavated but abandoned. Yeah, I saw her digging yesterday, but she seemed to have abandoned this egg, uh, this nest rather. Here's another one. So that's something that tortoises do. They may actually abandon a nest because they aren't happy with it. Uh, there's another little dude. How you doing, little dude? Good to see you. Hey, you know what? Since we're over here, let's go visit with the, wait a minute, <clears throat> there they are. You're gonna have to crouch down here, Matt. You're a tall dude, but we're going in with the rhino iguanas. We're getting into some lizard territory here at the Campo. Let's go in. Hey, rhinos. I gotta come up with a better plan because this is not good on the old spine. I was talking about scoliosis earlier. Let me show you this. These are Petro and Petra. That is Petra, that is Petro. I figured they're rock iguanas, so let's go with this petrified uh, name angle. Um, this gal here is a beaut. I got her for my friends, uh, Dave Morningstar and his family at Morningstar Reptiles, at Starborn Reptiles rather. And uh, if you guys can search them out, at Starbone Reptiles on Instagram and give them some support. They had tremendous damage done uh, by Hurricane, oh gosh, what was it, Ian, right? Is that the Hurricane, Matt? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was Hurricane Ian. There's so many darn hurricane names, I forget. But their whole backyard and home was flooded out. They rescued all their animals and thankfully, I believe, most of their animals survived. But it was very traumatic and they've got a long road to recovery, rebuilding everything. So if you can head on over there Instagram and see how you can help, that would be a big favor for me. These two animals came from them. They're rhinoceros iguanas. There is the male. That is my man. Look at this. 
Look at how cool that is. He just loves his, uh, we're buddies. Oh, he's gonna stand up. One is barely rubbed, yeah. God, aren't they gorgeous? I mean, you would never think a lizard would love this, but guys, when you keep these animals in a cool environment, in a big, spacious enclosure, they behave more naturally and they show you more of their intelligence. And they love a little affection. They're fantastic reptiles. So you can see, he's got one horn. She is what you would call, um, oh, you can lick me, go ahead. I don't have no food for you though. She's a multi-horned rhino iguana. Look at all the horns on her and she's shedding. Oh God, she's shedding. There you go, look at this. Little horn sheddy shed. Let's see how beautiful they look. Look at this, look at those horns, they're blue. How awesome guys, they shed it out. Okay, and then they have those beautiful colors underneath. She's got the blue spines. How awesome, right? And uh, if those of you who may be older than me will remember uh, Sinbad and Harry, what was it, Ray Harryhausen movies, stop motion animation. It was the big rage in the uh, 30s, 40s, and 50s, and 60s. Anyway, uh, and even into the 80s with Clash of the Titans. I'm a nerd, I love movies, especially movies that have rhino iguanas that are being passed off as dinosaurs. And that's what they actually did with these animals. They made them look huge, and uh, you would be watching this animal trample over uh, or being superimposed uh, on uh, our unsuspecting Sinbad people or Jason and the Argonauts, all these movies that were a big deal to me because they had reptiles in them. So, okay, cool. Love you guys. We're gonna get out of here and stretch our backs a little bit because I noticed when Matt got out of the car, he was kind of trying to stretch out a little bit and I'm not doing him any favors. Okay, one of the first structures that was ever built here at Camp Cannon uh, was the iguana cage. This cage was built by a guy, Tom Johnson, at Cage Masters many, many years ago. And then I made some improvements to it, um, if you can call them that. I made some additions. Now, we're going to visit with Lulu, the croc monitor. So I'm going to grab the camera and we're going to go and say hello to her. She is going to be getting a new home very, very soon. Here's Lulu. Lulu! Lulu! She's blind in one eye, so I've got to be very careful. Lulu! Hey, girl! Where are you? Oh, yeah, she's a little nervous. There you go, sweetheart. I don't mean to scare her. Oh, my gosh, she's gorgeous. She is a beautiful girl. She's going to be getting a new home. All right, I'm backing up. So, after you guys. Watch your head, man. Cool. All right, so in here, you know them, you love them. It's Guapo and Lola. That's right, everyone's favorite Cuban rock iguana couple. It's like Desi and Lucy. These two squabble, they chase each other around, but most of the time, they just kind of hang out, more shed, and just relax in the sun. It's the early part of the day, and you can see the sun's just shining down here, and our little ectotherms are warming up. Oh yeah, they're just growing up. Look, you're so cute, I love you. And uh, my gosh, man, I've had these two for as long as I've lived here in Florida. You can see they're super tame. They raise on up. I've never had any issues when I show people these animals. They're never uh, aggressive, they're never worried about people. That's because they've been raised up in this large enclosure for 18 years. And that's how old they are. They're 18 years old, but they'll live into their 60s. So I'm really excited about these two. Oh, and I'm excited. I love, oh, I love that. I love helping them shed look. Oh, it's, it's gotta feel good, doesn't it? You got the whole ear scale off there and everything. All right, buddy. Just help you out. I'm sure that's itchy. Oh my gosh, yes. Oh, it feels so good. I don't know. It's something I like to do. I guess I got a problem. It's a little OCD. Um, on the ground here, we've got the Cora Flava Marginata or the Chinese box turtle. We're going to pull one out real quick so you can see. There's turtles everywhere, guys. Oh, okay, there you go. Look at that beauty. What a cutie and a beauty. We got that hinge. She closes up just like a North American box turtle. There are only cousins though. The only thing that are pretty much the same is that they're turtles and they are box type turtles. But yeah, very neat. These guys, beautiful species. I love them. And they're a bit of an endangered species as well. All right, let's move on in here. You gotta keep it rolling. So much to see. You guys bored? I hope you're not bored. I hope you like reptiles or you wouldn't be watching this channel. Or watch your steps. 
because I moved those little boogers in here. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, a little cherry head tortoise just kind of wandering around, enjoying the solitude he finds himself in. It's a cool little spot. Uh, we've also got three redfoot tortoises in here somewhere, but you know what? We'll just have to hang out with him. Hi, beautiful. Look at that little dude. Isn't that amazing? I love these guys. And they're completely protected in here because they're in the lizard cage. So no birds of prey or raccoons or anything else can kind of get at them. Hey, look at this behind you, Matt. Check it out, all the way by the wall. There's one of the little redfoots. What do you guys think? Is that cool being able to keep little baby tortoises in such a large enclosure and have them be able to move about safely and freely? And look, there's another one behind you again, all the way on the other side. And this is the Goldilocks hour that baby tortoises like to be active in. It is the hours before 11 o'clock. These guys wake up, they get moving, and when it gets too hot, they hide. So right now, the temperatures are perfect. These little dudes are just coming out, warming up, exploring a little bit, and that's neat. But you know, they're not the only animals that live in this enclosure. We've got two blue iguanas, and they're nuts. Let's see them. Here are, I don't even have names for these guys. I forgot their names. I think it was like Hunter and something or other. I don't know. Let's call them Lunatic 1 and Lunatic 2. Here we go. Good morning. Well, it doesn't help that I scream at them. Uh, there is the female. She laid some eggs. Three of them are good. We're waiting for them to hatch. It should be any day now. And then, of course, the male is right there. Now, the heaters are on because it's been a little bit cool in the evening. And I want to keep these guys warm. But they are gorgeous. They essentially look just like the Cuban rock iguanas. But they've got a paler head, more blue hues. And that's why they're called Cayman blue iguanas. Um, just a really cool little species. I like them. I like them a lot. And, uh, you know, they're, yeah, they're, they're just a little bit more skittish than some of the other lizards. And I've tried and tried. I put them in here. I come in here. They come after me and bite my toes because they think they're food. But um, they just don't chill out. So it is what it is. Not everyone has to behave the way I want them to. They just have to be healthy and be lizards. And I'm happy about that. We're going to shut this now. Okay. Uh, Inky. But you know what? I'm gonna do a whole video on her, so we'll come back to her in another video and I'll give you an update on what's happening. But let's go see the Argus monitor. Is he out? He's not out. I think he's gonna be in here, so. Guys, just be quiet. I don't wanna wake him up, but I'm most likely gonna. Do you see him? I don't see him. Let's lift this up and see what we got. Come on over my shoulder. Peek in there. Do you see a lizard? Do you guys see him? Is he in there? Oh yeah, there he is. He just had a nice chick. Oh yeah. Okay, oop, out. Oh yeah, he's gonna be all lizardy. He's gonna be all Argosy, and he's gonna stand up just like a Tyrannosaurus. He's tripoding. He's trying to look big and bad, and he might even lunge at the camera. He's flaring out. He's hissing. All right, I'm sorry, dude. I just wanted to show you. Have to be social here at the camp. You have to be uh, willing to be on camera. All right, we're gonna lower it. Stop. Okay, cool. All right. Wow. And we're not even done yet. Can you believe it? All right, we're gonna get out of here and I'll see you at Cayman Creek. You know what, I lied to you guys. We still have more animals to see over here. Number one, the female Argus monitor is sunbathing on this rock escarpment that our friend Tanner Serpa made a few years ago. Uh, she's very shy, so we'll just say hello to her. Um, oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, there she is. She's looking good though, guys. I love these lizards. Argus monitors are some of my favorite. Really cool. But I wanted to show you and give you an update of some of the turtles that are kind of off display. They're back in this area. We've got, we've got some turtles here, people. We've got our Japanese, or rather Okinawan Reeves turtles. Isn't that neat? Really tiny. This is full grown. Like jet black. Yeah, beautiful, right? Really, really cool turtle. Uh, there's, of course, Japanese wood turtle in there just poking his head out of that hole. I don't know if you could see it if it's too glary, but he's yeah, a little bit. disappearing into the underbrush, the under thing. But I want to pull something out real quick. Um, it's been a little while since we did a checkup on our... You gotta be fast with these wacky looking turtles. 
the long snake neck turtle. Whoa. How cool, Seabin Rock snake neck. And then they'll, they put their head side to side to freak you out, but I'm not freaked out. I just like that turtle. So there's uh, seven more of these guys in here and they're doing awesome. The shells are getting nice and hard and they're growing and there's just, it, they are such beauties. Here's another one. Here's another one. Look at that. <laughs> What's better than one? Eight. How crazy are those necks, huh? That's that wild. is bizarre. Okay, let's put them on a lily pad and they can get on in the water. Boop, right down. Okay, now let's go to Cayman Creek. Okay, we're in Cayman Creek and this is pretty much the newest, I'm a little wobbly too. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, we're in the newest habitat that was built by my friends here at Camp Kennan uh, from Aquascape. So let me walk over here. And this is really cool because this is Lucifer, the dwarf caiman. And Lucifer's just resting right now. He's got his eyes open. He can see what's going on, but he's kind of relaxing here underwater. This little armored beast is absolutely amazing. And he shares this habitat with two Amazonian river turtles, a giant Mexican musk turtle, and a snapping turtle. So it's pretty cool, plus a bunch of convict cichlids and blue acara, uh, South American cichlids that are living in here. So it's a really cool habitat. And we are, oh, there's, there's the turtle. There's the Amazonian river turtle right there. Oh my gosh, awesome, beautiful species. How cool. All right, so basically guys, uh, good old, good old Lucifer is just relaxing right now. What a beauty, he's so cute. I think he's a gorgeous little guy. He was one of Fred's. He actually started out with me. I gave him to Fred and uh, he's back with me now. So it's really cool to have him here enjoying this beautiful habitat that my friends at Aquascape, Ed Ballou, Greg DePond Guy, Bruno, all my friends helped me build. Uh, you know, Aaron, I just could name drop all these amazing certified Aquascape contractors who came to my house, donated their expertise and their knowledge uh, and their sweat equity to build this habitat. And we are just in one section. We're actually gonna go around to the other section and we're gonna see two more crocodilians that came from Fred. But this is just an awesome habitat. And you can see it's evolving, it's growing, it's growing in. And in another year, this will look like a jungle. And that is exactly what I want it to be, a jungle river system, a jungle creek, which is where dwarf caiman and smooth front caiman prefer to live in small pools that are flowing. So uh, pretty excited, man. This is going off. This is actually the filtration. This is the wetland filter. And then it flows downstream. And let's go downstream and see what else we can find in this awesome habitat. How about it? Cayman Creek continues. Those are the two smooth front Cayman. Uh, these were also Fred's and they are a different type of dwarf species of Cayman from South America. Beautiful animals and they spend most of their time during the day in this cave that I constructed. You can go back and check out that video. And basically they hide during the day and then at night they're very active. They wander around this entire enclosure and then get into the pools here. We've got snapping turtles in here. We've got more Amazonian river turtles, more cichlids. And uh, it's a great habitat. I can't thank my friends at Aquascape enough for what they've done for this camp. It's just tremendous, man. This whole place was put together in about one week. Just incredible, huh? It is amazing. All right, let's continue the tour, guys. We're gonna walk on over here. It's just a quick hop, skip, and a jump over to see some really cool monitor lizards right in the back 40 of Camp Cannon. Let's go. Let's make sure we lock the gates, keep everyone in and safe. All right, let's do that. Let's head all over here. And let's go see the newer croc monitors that we've gotten. Of course, I'm talking about Chase and Diamond. These guys are beautiful. This is just incredible. Oh, they're in their house. One's in their house and one is not. Let's see. Let's open this up. Again, since we had that disturbing robbery, we have locks on everything, we have security on everything, and uh, we just want to make sure our animals stay where they belong. 
Okay, so he's going to be a little nervous. I don't want to scare him too much, but the big male is actually inside the hide box at the moment. Uh, that is Chase, because he chases around Diamond. And Diamond is actually, yep, there you go. There's Chase. Good boy. Big lizard, man. And it's nice that he's using this habitat. I like that. And then if you raise up here, you can see Diamond is just relaxing as well. So these two have moved into Lagatha's old abode. And, um, you know, I'm really, really thankful that we have these guys for my friend Alejandro. And we're going to be visiting Alejandro real soon and bringing him a gift. So I'm pretty excited about that. Whoa, here, here. You don't want to get bit by a croc monitor. Uh, and let's not upset the croc monitors, but let's go see a monitor who's a lot more friendly. I just wanted to show you guys, it's a tour. You gotta see everyone. Let's go check out probably the most famous lizard we've got. Just give me a second to lock up. All right, let's go see Slinky, shall we? His place has just blossomed, man. This place is amazing. Slinky! That's cool. It's like having your own pet dragon. Forget the Targaryens. The Harkins are the real dragon masters. Not a lot of people know this, but in old Valeria, we were the Mon of the Lizard Kings. Nah, I'm just kidding. There are people out there who've got real beautiful monitor lizards like my buddy Kevin from Nerd, but I just love these animals. I love the monitors because they get large, they're intelligent, and uh, he's a little nervous because you're kind of new, Matt. But um, we're going to let him just relax, wander around me. I don't want to get whipped by that tail. It hurts. So let's just see what Slinky's going to do. But what do you guys think? This was an ode to Slinky building this habitat. Of course, I got to throw out Jerry, my buddy Jerry. He helped me build it, as did, of course, a name that I've been throwing around all the time, the Aquascape folks. They really hooked it up. Plus, my friend Stuart Dunn from... Universal Rocks supplied these amazing uh, faux. I would, I, they look so real, I hate calling them faux. Uh, but they are a synthetic rock and they're lightweight. Oh, look, he's giving you kisses, everybody. How cool is that? He is a gorgeous animal. And uh, as most of you know, he almost died a few years back. And so we built him this habitat to, you know, just to honor him for pulling through like he did. And he is just gorgeous. I've never loved an animal more than I love Slinky. I just think he's amazing. And he wants to come see what you guys are doing out there. Slinky, you can't go out there today. I don't have any food to lure you back in with. You just gotta stay in with me, buddy. But look at this. I mean, he's big, he's large, he's in charge. He's got this whole habitat, which has grown in gorgeously. It's been about two years now since this habitat was completed. And uh, my gosh, it's just, I can't thank the friends that I have enough for helping me out. Um, we've got pond lilies. There's flowers growing in here now. Slinky's giving me kisses. He's just exploring. His tongue's flicking left and right. Uh, that means that he's inquisitive. He's calm. And uh, you got to read this body language, you know. Very, very important. So I just allow him to do what he wants um, within reason. And, uh, you know, he's, he's been good to me. I've not been bitten by him. Uh, we respect each other, and I, I just kind of allow him to be him. I don't force him into doing anything, which I think is key. Um, so here he goes. He's just wandering around checking things out. And I got to say, Matt's doing such a good job. What do you guys think, man? Matt didn't grow up around reptiles, and I think he's doing fantastic handling himself. I'm much better than Tom. Sorry, Tom. <laughs> you really do lose your cool when you get in here with snakes and slinkies. But if you guys just get a good look at this habitat, you can see how well it has grown in. And I really attribute this habitat to why Slinky has grown in the last few months, in the last few years rather. He's so calm, he's so big, he's so happy. Look at him, slinking on in to his home. He's so happy here. And I'm happy just seeing this animal utilize every single inch of this habitat. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Look at that. Right through the lilies. He don't care. He just wants to go swimming. He'll trounce those lilies, but you know what? He's the king. He can do whatever he wants in this habitat. I love Slinky the best. Woo! Let me know what you guys think of Slinky's habitat. Do you like how it's growing in? Do you like how we've changed it? We, we fixed the lid. Um, we've done a lot lately 
and uh, the camp is just evolving. So I had to do an update, a tour update of the camp to show you guys just how well things are growing in. You almost lost it. <laughs> I think Slinky's place is the best. Yeah. He just gets free reign of the whole place. Yeah, it's, it's just really gratifying uh, to see him enjoy himself this much. Because the animal has plenty of spaces to get away from us. He's not cramped up. He's allowed to feel uh, in control. He can come to us when he wants and get away from us when he wants. I really don't tame my animals. I give them enclosures that make them feel comfortable. Um, and all the monitors are gonna have large enclosures uh, if they don't already. So some of these young monitors you've seen are gonna get dramatic upgrades in their habitats. All right, moving along, we're gonna take the long way and we're gonna go around, of course, one of the biggest projects this year, in addition to Cayman Creek, was Fred's Lagoon. Here it is, guys. We're walking down the side. This is amazing. There they both are. We're gonna go inside and see if we can call those gators to the other side. Just to show you the scope of this enclosure. Uh, these are big alligators that my buddy Fred Grunwald had. And when um, he told me a few years back that I was gonna be inheriting them uh, from him when he passed away, it was the, huge, just the biggest honor uh, that he could have bestowed upon me because Fred was a huge part of our channel. And through our channel, Fred became well known and a bunch of other YouTubers discovered him and uh, they shared their channels with him as well as they should have because Fred was just a vast wealth of knowledge and love. And uh, check it out. Here they come right now. Now I know Matt's first day on the job was here with these alligators and check them swimming. Here they go. Look at them go, man. They are just coming over to say hello to me. They think they're gonna get fed, but they're not. Now the water's really green because there's a lot of pollen in the water right now. Uh, the water levels are dropping. We haven't had a lot of rain. So right now water levels are dropping, but that's okay. This is exactly what these alligators need. Uh, they go through these changes in season we have a wet and dry season and that male just disappeared so why don't you walk over here matt come on over here i want to i want to make sure that we're on the same side of each other when the male pops up there he is snaggletooth um and i've known these animals for many many years uh, as long as i've known fred and uh, so it's cool that i get to be the steward of these guys um, as I continue on my reptile, uh, oh, I suppose profession? I don't know. I'm just glad that I can be a part of these animals. And they are really green right now, aren't they? How cool is that? So that's Dale, Lady Dale. And then of course, next to her is our man, Snaggletooth. And we're just gonna walk on back and look at this. She thinks she's getting fed, but there's no food today, Dale. You ain't getting no food. You are just being shown to the multitude out there on YouTube, man. Great animals, um, I love them. And they're pretty well behaved. Uh, they haven't rushed out at us, they know I don't have food, so they're maintaining uh, a safe space. Um, I'm sure I could call them up if I wanted to, but I don't wanna call them up unnecessarily. I'm trying to just get into a rhythm with them and let them know that when I come in here with just the cameras, we're just talking, we're just hanging out. And that when I come in here with a bucket, that's food time. So I'll probably feed these guys later today. During the cooler months that we're getting into, these animals are only gonna get fed maybe twice a month and smaller amounts of food. So these guys are just kind of chilling out. As you can see, they are really not hurting. Uh, they don't miss many meals, okay? These guys are definitely fat and happy. But I love them, man. And of course, we've got the bridges in here. Um, that was a big help. Thank you, Matt. And you can see, look at him. He's even just backing away. He's like, all right, I'm not getting fed. So why am I wasting my time? So very cool stuff. All right. We're narrowing it down, people. We are narrowing this adventure down. We're getting to the end of our tour. Let's head on out and go see a few more little highlights that I have here at the camp. And we're gonna roll right into them because we're not far from them. That's the cool thing. We're not far from all the action here at the camp. Check this out. We're gonna roll off the backside. We'll get to that pond in a little bit, but we're gonna roll up back here. We've gotta say hello to Colin who ate yesterday. Colin is my coastal carpet python. And I've had him for a good number of years and he's named after my friend, Colin Schumark. Now check this out. Go ahead and look at that. See that python? He's utilizing the whole space. 
So there he is, Colin's just hanging out, and you can see part of him's on the branch, part of him's on the shelf. He can stretch out, he can get sun, he can be relaxed. He's got himself a watering hole, he's got himself uh, a hide box. Everything uh, a young, lovely snake, he's not that young, he's kind of old. Everything a snake needs. I just like keeping them in more of an outside area. Okay, here we go. You guys know this is the other aquascape masterpiece this is the giant recreation pond we've got beautiful turtles in there uh, we've also got over here living pond side are our black dragons that jerry hatched and one of them is up underneath this rock or it's not a rock is it it's actually a uh, log but we also got let's see let's see if i can coax one out I don't think so. Up, 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 up. You're gonna come out? These guys ate yesterday. You're gonna bite my fingers? Woo -hoo -hoo. So they had a chick a piece yesterday, and that is just a cool lizard, isn't it? This guy will be close to eight foot when full grown. So that is the black dragon. Oh, give him a whip. Oh, you're so tough. You hear that hissing a whip? How cool. They've got a lot of spunk, these guys. And he's just seeing, a, is that food? Can I eat that GoPro? No, can I, I whip don't that GoPro? He yes. sure can. He can whip it. Oh, whip it good. Very cool, man. So there's two of them in here, but uh, they both look very similar. So we'll just spend our time with Whippet. It's Whippet and Devo. So uh, you can tell I was a fan of 80s new wave music. Uh, pretty cool stuff. All right, we're going to keep flowing. I like the mighty Mississippi here. Gosh, I've been talking for a long time. So, of course, in here we've got our Badiger of Finnis. There's some of them over here. Recently, we had to treat them because of the fungus. Here's the male just hanging out. There's a male right there, just relaxing. Okay, so he's just hanging. Watch that rock and be slipping. There he is. And then we've got the two Fly River Turtles in here as well. Uh, and it's just awesome, man. Uh, again, another cool habitat that our friends at Aquascape uh, hooked us up with. And uh, gosh, guys, this has been a fun tour. And uh, you know, we've got the giant pond over there. And we've of course got Buttercup over there. But you know what? We got no more time on this memory card. We might have to do another tour one day. Gotta keep you wanting for more. Thanks for joining me. I hope you guys enjoyed this tour, seeing some of the updates we've done to the camp. Uh, as always, we really do appreciate you guys for being a part of our adventures and watching this place grow. I hope you guys are enjoying the videos because we are not even close to done making them. See you guys soon. Bay. Oh, look. Bye, not bay. Subliminal?